Hello dear viewer, Time Warp Doer Murdoch X here, and today I'm here to share with you my self-indulgent video about my Ready Player One swag. Now, I figure there are three types of people that will watch this video. First, there are the people that have neither read the book nor seen the movie, and that's okay. I'll kinda walk you through this. Second would be the people who have read the book or seen the movie, and hopefully this video will let you know about some of the loot that's out there so you can complete your collections. And third would be the type of person who's written the book and movie. Mr. Klein, if you're watching, I would love to be on the list for the Ready Player 2 ARC. Please, 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 please. But enough of my flagrant please, let's get to the loot. At the apartment that my wife and I share, we have loads of wonderful and nerdy artwork up and flying spaghetti monster willing we'll have loads more as our life continues. So let's jump into this. First and foremost here is the novel signed by author Ernie Klein. Quick note, he introduces himself as Ernie, which is why I say that rather than Ernest. But moving along, I also have his collector's card, which is also signed. I have my wife to thank for this item, but we'll come back so I can share that story with you later. Next up, we have Armada, the second novel by Mr. Klein. Funny thing, I swear this was autographed. There may be another copy floating around my apartment somewhere. At this point, you may be thinking that I've gone through all of the Klein's books, but you'd be wrong. Mr. Ernest Klein is also a slam poet, and he has a book of some of those works titled The Importance of Being Earnest, which I have here. Since we're on the topics of books, for a little while, Half Price Books was selling hoverboard journals. I love these things. I actually have two of them. Next up are the posters. First we have the mini posters from the movie. I have several of these so that I can give them away to friends. These, these are nice. After that we have a giant poster which I believe is the one that is used in theaters. It has a reverse image printed on the back. Is, is that a thing? A friend of mine gave this to me when he found out I was a huge Ready Player One fan. That was pure luck right there. Thank you Zane. The final three posters are the Magic Eye ones from the Ready Player One experience. Feel free to pause the video to see if you can see the hidden images. Quick YouTube trick here. While the video is paused, press comma or period to make the image go forward or backwards one frame. And I'm terribly sorry Facebook viewers, I don't think that trick works there. The Ready Player One experience was an event that was held during South by Southwest here in Austin where they had a giant room filled with props, games, activities, and sometimes the actors for the movie. It was a nice event, and I have my friend Dusty, another Gunter, to thank for helping me get in. There are a few other items in this video from that event. Speaking of events, there was another event here in Austin for the trailer premiere of the movie that the Klein, it's a thing, attended. There were also several Warner Brothers employees here, and I later discovered that they had an interview with Klein that was recorded here that is on the special features for the Blu-ray and DVD release of the film. Leading up to the event, there were a few ways to win tickets to attend, and there were signs up at some of these locations. I nabbed the sign from one of those events. Next up, we have t-shirts. The first two are the ones that could be purchased at Hot Topic, which is where nearly all of the retail items were sold at. This includes the pins, which were harder to find than I expected. First up, there's the title t-shirt shown here, and by the way, if you've never noticed, the title has an egg with a maze leading to it. There's also the three key shirt, which I do like a little bit more as the image isn't as fuzzy on this one. And finally, there's this shirt, which was for employees at one of the events. I believe this was from the lead up to the trailer premiere. Now for some of the smaller things. There's a handful of unlicensed merchandise and probably the most popular of them is this no sixer sticker. I had two of these, the other is on my old car that is no longer with us. That car and sticker now live on a farm in Colorado. Luckily I bought two, so I still have this one. Next up is this picture that my wife took of Ernie's car at Classic Game Fest back in 2015. We had it printed and got it signed in frame. You'll also see this picture on his website, which is part of the story that I'm saving for later in the video. Another Hot Topic item is the tote bag. This may be the best design of the Hot Topic line of products. Next up is the Ready Player One pin from Dragon's Lair, a local games and comic shop. There are a few places that have had events surrounding Ready Player One. Some of the others are Austin Books and Comics, Book People, and Game Over Video Games. All good stores, check them out if you're ever in town. Next up is this Armada patch. These were giving out during the Armada ARG. Did I mention that both Ready Player One and Armada had hidden messages in them that led to contests? I got this patch as part of a promotion at Austin Books and Comics though. 
Next up are these nice enamel pins which I picked up at the Ready Player One experience. The staff at the event said that they thought it was exclusive to the event but that maybe they were available at Hot Topic. I don't remember if I saw these at Hot Topic so I can neither confirm nor deny this. Gunters, please let me know in the comments if you saw this at Hot Topic. Thank you. Next up is the event bracelet from the Ready Player One experience. There was also a bracelet for sale there but this one was part of the event itself. You could scan it at several locations around the event including a handful of hidden locations like this cassette tape wall that I made the smart decision of dabbing in front of. Lucky for me, dabbing will never go out of style and therefore this image will never seem dated. Besides the pen from Dragon's Lair and the ones from Hot Topic, Austin Books and Comics also had some pens. I handed out my duplicates to other Gunters and mailed a few of them to online friends. On that note, the Facebook group for Ready Player One is still active. Stop by and say hi sometime. Next up is a birthday card that the Klein It's a Thing sent me. Remember that picture that was used on his website from earlier? Klein told my wife that he'd owe her a favor for using her image and my wife was kind enough to call in that favor for my 36th birthday. She also got a hold of some of my favorite YouTubers as well that year. It's still hard to believe that this happened. I think I still owe my wife for this one. She's pretty cool. Now for the final crazy balls item that I own. This would be a good time to mention that there's another important Gunter here in Austin and he works for the billboard company and he was able to snag a freaking billboard. <laughs> this thing is too big to put up in my apartment. It's too tall and it's too wide. I've been trying to figure out what to do with this thing because it's awesome and, and I don't want to destroy it. If I could just put it up to cover the walls, I totally would. Maybe, maybe in my next apartment. I also thought about using it around my apartment porch as some sort of a privacy fence, but I don't think that would fly. You know, I really don't know what to do with this. This, this thing is huge. Let me know if you have any ideas, please. So that's it for my collection, I think. But there are still loads of cool items out there. One thing I never did get my hands on was the extra life tokens from the Ready Player One experience. I did go to this event, but they must have been out when I got there, or they forgot to give me one. Who knows? There was a lot going on. Now because there was an ARG, an alternate reality game, for the movie which I took part in, I ended up with a sort of a frenemy. Angie was part of another team and she's also one of the most well-known Gunters. Some of the swag she owns includes this Extra Life coin as well as this leather bound Easton Press signed edition of the book. And there are loads of different versions of the book with alternate covers and such. I've seen some people online that collect these different covers. Another thing that Angie has is personal plates. These are awesome. But you know there is actually one thing that Angie and I do have in common and that is Pac-Man formal wear. I have my Pac-Man suit and she has the dress. One day we'll be at the same event and get a picture. That will probably happen when I win the Ready Player 2 ARG. Oh, shots fired. I'm coming for you Ready Player 1 ARG players. The next prize is going to a member of the new batch. It's happening. <laughs> oh. Okay, so quick note here. I went to go look through the images that Angie sent me and I didn't realize it, but she actually also owns the Subterranean Press signed edition release of Ready Player One. She has number 750 of 750. How cool is that? A couple of quick things here at the end of the video. I forgot to mention that the t-shirt I was wearing this whole time, the, uh, the one that says Gunter, is also one of the Hot Topic shirts. Uh, I like it. It's a good shirt. I wear it around quite often. I also put out a request on the official Ready Player One Gunter Clan of Facebook for pictures of swag or from events, which I'll be showing throughout the rest of this video.
Thank you for subscribing, now get out there and get yourself some Ready Player One loot.